Okay, so it's a pleasure to have uh, Jesus Alberto Palma Marquez from the Weizmann Institute now, <laughs> very recent, um, and he will talk about stratified resolution of singularities of generalized analytic functions. So you have about 50 minutes and then we'll take some time for questions. Okay, thanks. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Tamara, thank you to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present our work. So I will talk about the certified resolution of singularities of generalized analytic functions. And this, this work is, is a joint work with Beatriz Molina Samper from the Univers Universidad Autónoma de Madrid and Fernando San Sanchez from the Universidad de Valladolid both in Spain, and the, the first part of the, this talk uh, is based on the, the seminal paper due to Van den Dries and Spiceger about the organic field with convergent um, generalized power series. And the second part of the introduction where we will talk about generalized analytic manifolds, the, the, the spaces we are interested in, is based on uh, a work due to Martin Villaverde, Roland and San Sanchez, where they proved, proved uh, the local normalization for generalized analytic manifolds in general, and also they introduced there uh, the category of generalized analytic manifolds, so this, this category. And all the introduction is based, based on these two papers, mostly. And then when we have all the ingredients and definitions and basic facts we have, we need to know, then we, we will pass to, to to the second part, that is the, the statement of the certified resolution of singularities for generalized analytic manifolds. And we will see a sketch of the proof. So uh, let me start by introducing first the, the class of generalized power series, which simply are um, Formal power series, formal, I'm sorry, formal generalized power series, which are formal, formal power series with uh, real exponents instead of uh, just non-negative non integers numbers. We consider now the, the set of exponents as uh, non-negative real numbers with one condition in the support of of the series, that is, the, the support will be the product of well-ordered subsets of non-negative real numbers. With this condition on, on this series, we, we obtain, we, we can prove that the collection, the, the set of all the formal generalized power series are indeed a local ring. Uh, because it makes sense to take sums and products between, between formal generalized power series. And okay, it's a local ring, or if you want, a local R algebra. Okay. So, um, a few instances of this class of power series are given by these examples. For instance, in ODE, we have that solutions to the Euler system give us the simplest example of a generalized power series, which is T to the lambda, where lambda could be um, any positive real number. Okay. So another instance is given by preset series, which appears in uh, local analytic geometry as local parameterizations of branches 
or I'm, I'm sorry, of irreducible local plane and elite curves. Okay, this this series as is uh, said here have fractional exponents instead of natural ones. So is another example. Of course, we have also the class of certain cases of Dulac max, like the like those we are seeing in the course of Patrick Spacer. But I mean just a certain class of these ones, which are given by the first return maps at polycycles with special vertices. That is, um, if we want to obtain a Dulac map that is whose which um, whose asymptotic development is given by a formal generalized power series. We have to consider uh, polycycles with um, hyperbolic and no, no resonant um, vertices. Okay. And what else? Um, some special subrings of the ring of all the formal generalized power series are, of course, the usual ones, the power series with um, natural support. That, with natural exponents, and of course, the rank of convergent uh, power series, usual power series, and also uh, an interesting ring for us will be the given by the mixed uh, power series, where we make a distinction between Mm, the variables where we take into account uh, non-negative real numbers as exponents and those where we just consider natural numbers as exponents. And we call the latter analytic to, to, to remember that, in fact, well, in the case of um, I'm sorry, in the case of convergent generalized power series, this gave rise to analytic, analytic, analytic functions in those variables, in the analytic ones. I'm sorry. And, um, okay, of course, the, the ring of convergent generalized power series, taking the usual uh, notion of convergence in this setting, okay? And um, before I talk about functions, let me introduce this, this notion of monomial type. And it's the following. We say that a formal generalized power series or a mixed one with coefficients in analytic functions is of monomial type. If it is given by a monomial times a unit, uh, a unit, let's use this, okay? And why, why this is important for us? Because we will talk about later in the second part of this talk about um, a resolution of singularities uh, statement. Okay, and what we have, what we want, I'm sorry, is to obtain a process that given any power series, any generalized uh, power series, a conversion one, sorry, we look for a process that um, transforms this series into a, a series of monomial type locally. Okay, so I'm, um, I will give the details uh, below, both. Here's the definition of monomial type. And how can we know if, if a given series is of monomial type? Well, we have two, two main tools. The first one is the minimal support. 
okay, the minimum support of the power series S. And it is defined in terms of the division order uh, between monomials. And I here I just recall the definition of the division order on the non-negative orthon in Rm. And this is the partial order relation. Find as following. We say that alpha is less or equal than beta if and only if it is in each entry. Okay. And in fact, this is called division order because we are th thinking in monomials. Okay. So we have this remark that alpha is less or equal than beta if and only if the monomial x to the alpha divides uh, the monomial x to the beta, okay? And what we obtain is that the set of all the minimal elements with respect to this order is, is called the minimal support of the power series S. And it is always, always a finite, finite set, okay? And this it is finite, it is finite because of the condition that we imposed in the definition of um, generalized power series. That is that the support of the series is the product of well-ordered uh, subsets of non-negative real numbers. Okay. Excuse me. So yes. Yes. Excuse. No, no. Just, just, just a point. Just a remark. It's, it's, it is not that the support is is a product. Is that it is contained in a product of uh, well ordered sets. It's not just a product. Just it's, yeah. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. So. Okay. Well, the this. This set, the minimal support of any given generalized power series is always a finite set, and it brings us a final representation of the series S. And it is given by the sum. We take the elements in the minimal support times some units, okay? So always we can rewrite any given generalized power series like this in, in these terms. And it is called the monomial representation of S. And just a remark, we can see that uh, generalized power series is of monomial type if and only if the minimal support is a singleton, okay? And the other tool we, we will use to read off if, if a given power series is of monomial type is the, the standard notion of Newton polyhedron that makes sense for this case, again, because of the definition of generalized power series. And we, define, we can define it, the, the Newton polyhedron of any given series, as as usual as the boundary of the convex hull of the Minkowski sum of these sets. Okay. And here I put a picture to to illustrate the way we construct construct uh, the Newton polyhedron. For instance, imagine that this set of points is the support of is containing the support of uh, Ge uh, some generalized power series. As you can see, when we take into account the minimal support, the minimal, the set of minimal elements with respect to the division order, what we obtain is the minimal support. And finally, when we consider when we consider the convex hull of the Minkowski sum. This Minkowski sum, we obtain the Newton polyhedron of S. And as you can see, always happens that the minimal support 
of any given series is contained in the vertices sets or set of the Newton polyhedron. Okay, it could be proper, but it always it is always a subset of the vertices set of the Newton polyhedron. Okay, and of course, again, a uh, generalized a uh, formal generalized power series is of monomial type. If and only if the vertices set, set of the Newton polyhedron consists of so, those one, one point. Sorry, okay. uh, the, the inclusion goes in the other direction, right? Um, so the vertex of the polyhedron are. I'm sorry, yes, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. Thank you, Vera. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, we, we can see it here in the in the example. <laughs> here and we'll we lose we lose this one. Okay. So yes, the vertex set is a subset of the universe world. Thank you, Bea. I'm sorry. So <clears throat> This will be our two main tools to, to read off if a given series is of nominal type. And in fact, what we are interested in looking at is the, the size of, the, for instance, the, the size of this set, okay, the neighbor support. Okay, so now I, I introduce the, the class of generalized analytic functions. And it is it is simple to talk about this because we define an, a generalized analytic function as the sum of a convergent generalized power series. Okay, in its definition domain, it defines a continuous function which is analytic, analytic in the usual terms, in the interior of this domain. Okay. <clears throat> In general, the domains are subsets of uh, the non-negative, the positive power term in Rm, sorry. <clears throat> and what else? Okay. Mm, ah, oh, of course. And given a generalized analytic function, we will say that it is it, it is a uh, phenomenal type at some point. Imagine that the origin, if the power series that define it is of monomial type, of course. So now we, we will pass to the second part of this introduction, that is to introduce the category of generalized analytic manifolds. That is the class of manifolds, topological manifolds, we can construct, construct with this class of functions, okay? So, uh, here we have the definitions. First, we start by giving the definition of a standard analytic manifold that is simply a topological manifold with boundary and corners endowed with a real analytic structure, okay? And we will use this notation that refers to uh, locally arranged spaces, that is, we present, we can present, uh, of course, uh, manifolds with, S, with some structure as a locally arranged space in, uh, in range of, rings, I'm sorry, of continuous functions. In fact, we, here we are considering real analytic functions on A, and um, just Copy this definition, uh, we, we obtain the definition of a generalized analytic function that is a topological manifold with boundary and corners again, but this time end out with a generalized analytic structure. Okay. Another way of defining this is saying that the transition maps are given by generalized analytic maps, okay? or that we have an atlas, um, 
by maximal atlas and the structure given by generalized uh, analytic uh, transformations. Okay. Uh, and because of we are uh, working with, uh, I'm sorry, topological manifolds with boundary and corners, and out with some structure, we can look at what is called the natural certification of these manifolds, which is defined in terms of the boundary components, um, the boundary strata. <clears throat> okay, and here I put a picture that I I think is it's quite clear what what we are thinking about when we, we say the natural certification of some analytic manifold. Okay, we just look for instance we have a manifold M. We just look at its boundary and we certify uh, the manifold in terms of the strata, uh, the different strata uh, that compose the boundary of the manifold M, okay? To the zero, zero strata, uh, the zero strata will be called corner points, okay? And, and that's, that's all, yes, I will not, no, it's okay. So corner points are just this zero strata of this natural certification. And now, now that we have uh, given the class of functions we are working with, the, the category of where these functions make sense, that is the category of generalized analytic manifolds, what we want to do is to perform some morphism that we already know in the standard case, for instance, the blowing ups. Okay. So how can we do that? How how can we we define um, or we we leave some non constructions in the standard setting to the generalized one? So here we we will follow the strategy set out by Again, Martin Villaverde, Roland, and, and Sanz, Sanchez. In the paper where they proved the local uniform, local monolization, sorry, for generalized power series. And what they did is, was to introduce uh, two technical notions of, of analytic manifolds, okay? And what is the idea behind talking about the enrichment and the standardizable uh, manifolds? Um, imagine that we, we consider a generalized manifold and we want to blow, take a blow up of this center, I don't know, at some center, permissible center, whatever that it is. And we wanted to construct the, this, this, this morphism. So we have no idea how can we do that. So what, what we do is to look for an analytic manifold I'm sorry, an analytic manifold, let's say A, with, of course, an analytic structure. And inside A, we take an admissible center, an admissible center, a standard admissible center. For instance, in our context, it will be a subset with normal crossings in A. And we know that this morphism, morphism is well defined, so we obtain here. And what we wa want to do is to lift this morphism into a morphism between generalized uh, analytic manifolds. So, 
First, we will introduce what is the enrichment of a standard manifold. It will be a manifold, a generalized analytic manifold, and then given a generalized analytic manifold, we will introduce the notion of a standardizable one. I think that you can imagine what what is next. So let let us see. So the enrichment, as the name say, says, of a standard manifold, broadly speaking, is just to enlarge the structure of a given manifold. So if we consider a standard manifold, let's say A, and we look at uh, the an analytic structure and maximal atlas uh, describe, describes this manifold, let's say EOA, we can enlarge, we can endow the same topical, topical space with a generalized analytic structure just by considering the class of generalized analytic um, functions that are compatible with this atlas. Okay? And in this way, we obtain uh, a generalized analytic manifold denoted by. A, E, and this is called the enrichment of the standard manifold A. So let, let's see that if we conserve the same topological space, but what we have changed, changed is the structure of the manifold, okay? And of course, we have uh, that the identity map between the topological space A defines a, a morphism between the, these locally arranged spaces. Okay, can be shown that. Uh, and what is this, the standardizable manifolds we will consider? This notion of standardizable manifolds. We will say that. A uh, generalized analytic manifold M is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. A standardization, first, a standardization of a generalized analytic manifold is just a subshift of the, the structure shift that defines the structure of the manifold M, the generalized manifold M. We consider a subshift which gives uh, or which endows M uh, with a standard analytic uh, structure, okay? <clears throat> and such that, this is important, so we consider a subshift given by uh, real analytic uh, functions, but which enrichment recovers the the larger structure, okay? This is important. And we will say now that M is standardizable if there exists at least a, a standardization of it, okay? And one can ask if all the generalized analytic manifolds uh, are a standardizable ones, uh, the answer is not. There, there, there are examples of generalized analytic manifolds which cannot be standardizable, which can uh, cannot meet any standardization. Okay. For instance, here I refer you to to look at this nice example. I call it well, we call we used to call call it uh, the exotic cylinder. And it's a nice example given in, by, again, Martin Villaverde, Roland, and San Sanchez in, in, in their paper, okay? So, we will continue now to, by introducing the notion of blowing up maps. We have all the ingredients, all, all the necessary ingredients to talk about uh, blown ups in the category of generalized analytic manifolds. And what else I, I think I am 
try to do something. No. Okay. Yes. Ah, yes. From now on, we will restrict ourselves to consider just standardizable manifolds. Okay. In order to be able to carry out uh, morphism between yeah, analytic manifolds. Okay. So here I put another remark also from the work of Martin Villaverde et al. And this is how looks uh, the morphisms between generalized uh, analytic manifolds way. Uh, and they, they proved that any given morphism between two generalized analytic manifolds locally looks like a monomial transformations at the points on the boundary, okay? That is, are locally of monomial type uh, at points on the boundary. So for instance, if we have here locally, here we have manifold N and a morphism to manifold N from a corner point, let's say P, locally, this morphism F is given by uh, monomial, monomial transformations, okay? And, and also, they, they also prove that the class of analytic morphisms between a standard analytic manifolds that can be lifted to a morphism between generalized analytic manifolds are those described locally by monomial transformations, monomial type transformations, okay? For instance, uh, the blowing ups we, we know, no? An important instance, the blowing ups, uh, well, the, the class of blowing ups we are interested in, the combinatorial ones, I will introduce them later. But uh, to talk about uh, blowing up morphisms, we, we need to, to know what a center is, okay? Like, like happens in the analytic setting, we first say what is what it is a, a center, an admissible center, and then we, we give the definition of a blowing up. So for us, uh, a center will be not just the topological support, but we will consider a, a, a subset of, of a manifold M and a standardization of the manifold and to, to this pair we will call it a center of blowing off for M if if Y this this set is an admissible center in in the standard case that is Y has uh, normal crossings in, in M okay <clears throat> and what else? Okay, so the definition, our definition of blowing ups in this category is the following. Given a generalized analytic manifold and a center, as defined uh, above, um, the blowing off morphism of M center at Y is just the enrichment of the usual blowing up of of it, uh, of this the standardization of M. That is, here we are in the category of generalized analytic manifolds, and at the bottom we are in the category of standard analytic manifolds. Okay, this is the standardization of M. Here. We know by definition of Y that Y is an admissible center, so it is well defined the blowing up at of M at Y and 
we just defined the blowing up of the generalized Henrik manifold at Y as the enrichment of, of the known well-defined uh, blowing up morphism in the usual standard Henrik manifolds, okay? Of course, we have this remark, well, uh, the morphism, this is just because it is the it is simply the enrichment of the unknown blowing up is proper subjective and the restriction between the complement of the exceptional divisor we created by this means is isomorphic to the complement of the center in M. Okay. And here is why is it just the pre image by pi, okay? And it's called the exceptional divisor. And as I said before, here we just, we, we just consider a special subclass of blowing up that is given by the combinatorial ones. And we say that uh, blowing up is combinatorial if the center, the topological support of our center is the closure of a stratum of the natural stratification of M, okay? And here, uh, there, is, there is an important remark about this new class of blowing ups in this new category of manifolds, generalized manifolds, and that is that, broadly speaking, we can say that uh, blowing ups in the category of generalized and analytic manifolds depends on the coordinates we, we take into account. Okay, here I put the example, but I will pass uh, uh, to the problem. Zero so of time. And now, the resolution of singularity problem, finally. And there is two, two versions of this problem, two approaches, approaches to this problem. The first one is given by the local setting, the local framework, and where we just look for local monolization algorithms, or local resolution of singularities of functions, as happens in the standard case, as in the Belotto's course, courses, okay, lectures, I'm sorry, and the global setting. Okay, till now, it was just, um, results about the local setting, the general local monolization theorem was obtained by Martin Villaverde, Roland, and Sanz in this paper. And they, they used and uh, modified some ideas that appeared in the standard setting uh, developed by Wilson and Milman, and also uh, by Roland, uh, Spicer, and Wilk, okay? <clears throat> and if we just want to look for an algorithm in, in that given a uh, power series, uh, we can obtain a sequence of formal transformations that, uh, that give, give rise a monomial, a local monomial type uh, function, we can obtain that by an algorithm, um, uh, a nice algorithm developed by Van der Dries and Spacegger in his paper about the real field with convergent generalized power series. And also there are another algorithms, uh, another known algorithms by Roland and Tamara Servi, and also by Tamara in another work of her. And in the global counterpart, till now we just know the, the same answer, the stratified resolution of singularities that we will introduce now. But for the case of dimension at most three, the dimension one, uh, it doesn't make sense, but in what we have proved previously was the the case of dimension 
three. The, also, the dimension, the two dimensional case is obtained by the, the arguments given by Van der Dries and the space area. Okay. So, what is this, the certified resolution of singularities? Um, for us, what we want obtain, what we want to obtain is that given, for instance, a generalized analytic manifold N and some generalized analytic function defined on it, we look for a, a sequence of blowing ups such that I don't know. We we obtain another manifold, another generalized manifold M tilde, and what we want to happen is that when we look at the total transform, that is the composition of F, F with pi, we want to we want that uh, at each corner point on M tilde. Let's say and looks like anomial times a unit. Okay. There, there, there is there are local coordinates, or there is a local coordinate system centered at a given corner point, such that the germ of the total transform at it looks like. Um, monomial type uh, function, okay? So, we just want to look at the corner points because if we, we obtain this at every corner point on N corner, corner point, we obtain that generically at each stratum of the boundary of M, you obtain the same situation with respect to the generalized um, components, okay? So here is the definition of the stratified monomial function of given a generalized analytic manifold and a function on it, a generalized analytic manifold, of course, we say that F is a certified monomial on M if it is locally of monomial type at uh, every corner point. Okay. This, this scheme, we, we already know that is true in the case of dimension at most three. But what we obtained recently with Beatriz and Fernando, Beatriz Molina Samper, I'm sorry, and Fernando San Sanchez, is the following statement that given a generalized analytic manifold and function globally defined on it, then for any given point, let, let's think a um, corner point, for instance, there exists an open neighborhood of it and a finite sequence of combinatorial blowing ups like this, such that the total transform of the initial function is a certified monomial on M sub N, okay? And moreover, uh, there is this remark, uh, at each step of the resolution process, we can consider just, uh, restrict ourselves to consider just uh, centers of co-dimension two. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, yes. Jean, Jean Philippe, uh, so th this result is in the any dimension? Yes, of course. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, this is okay. Yes, okay. dimension. Yes, it's in general dimension. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yes, it's in any dimension. That is this generalized my, uh, the previous work. Where we just now yeah, okay okay by in dimension three now with Beatriz and Fernando we obtained the, this in general for any dimension yes the certified resolution of singularities as we have called it 
and the remark we put here is uh, this first step, this stratified resolution of similarities, is like a first step of a general resolution of similarities. Okay. For any generalized analytic manifold. And the, the idea is it, it's it's nice, I, I can say I I like because it's there is more um, there is geometry behind ge geometric ideas behind the proof. And Look, we we start with an open neighborhood around a point, and then we look for a finite sequence of combinatorial blowing ups, such that blah blah blah, such that we obtain that the total transform is a certified monomial. Okay, but uh, let us see that this result is a consequence of the following situation. If we start again with the same the same problem here m0 is an open neighborhood or a corner point p and we consider any any finite sequence of combinatorial blowing ups then if we if we prove the result result for any sequence like this that is that given any finite sequence of combinatorial blowing ups then there exists a finite sequence of combinatorial blown ups over it, such that the total transform of the starting function, that is the, the total transform of the initial function for us, is a certified monomial on the last uh, generalized manifold. Okay, so if we are able to prove this, then we obtain this statement as a corollary, corollary okay? So this is what we do, and to do that, the strategy is to analyze uh, in detail, I'm sorry, this, the, these guys. What we do, what we did is to analyze um, all, 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 um, all the finite sequences over an open neighborhood of a corner point, initial open neighborhood of, of a corner point, we analyzed all the, uh, the all the possible combinatorial uh, finite sequence of combinatorial blowing ups, and our main tool here is to translate this into a linear algebra problem, into a linear algebra, I don't know, element, <laughs> okay? And why, how, how we do that? Well, we do it uh, using what is called or known as matrices of exponents, which can be found in the works of Bruno and also the Subskaya and made Dieva. I'm sorry, I always, I always pronounce wrong this surname. And we rediscovered this this translation, and it's the following: when we look at this finite sequence, what we are really seeing is the following quiver. This is the starting open neighborhood of a corner point. This is the structure and the atlas that defines the manifold M1. That is, this is the open cover and these are the transition maps that defines M1 and so on. This is the atlas that defines Mm. These are the horizontal arrows are the local pictures of the combinatorial blocking ups. And what we have is that uh, both the local pictures of 
eh, combinatorias de blowing ups and the transitions maps between the atlases of the given manifolds are all of monomial type, are given by monomials, okay? And we have a tool that, given a monomial transformation, translates translate it in a linear transformation, okay? We can think about it as a logarithmic point of view. It makes sense. And so we have a dictionary between monomial transformations and linear transformations. For instance, just to, to clarify this point, if we consider the, the blowing up of the origin in R2, in the positive quadrant in R2, we can see this geometric picture, but what we have is the two uh, local picture of pi and the transition map between the shards defining this manifold, okay? So if we want to analyze these, these maps that are given by monomials, we can do it in terms of um, linear transformations. And we think that dealing with uh, linear, linear maps is easier that, than dealing with monomials and exponents. And so it simplifies a lot of calcul calculations and make clear um, the most of the points needed to, to get the proof. So with this tool, we, we analyze the space of all these gas, which we have called the monomial voot étoile. Uh, I'm sorry, here is of M. So summing up, I'm sorry. The main step of our proof is the following. With these tools, the minimal spore, the that the minimal spore and the Newton polyhedron that allows to read off if a given generalized analytic function is or not of monomial type. And with this dictionary of um, um, linear transformations, we study the, the family of all the possible finite sequences of combinatorial blowing ups. And here I say all, but in fact, uh, we restrict ourselves to consider just um, those obtained by monomial standardizations. Okay, given locally by monomials, pure monomials without unities. And we, we call the class of all the possible final sequence of combinatorial blowing ups, the monomial root étoile of M0, the initial neighborhood, um, and based on the seminal work about the root étoile by Hironaka. And when I say we study in detail this, we study how the how the transition maps are, and given that is a very crucial step in the proof, given a local monomial standardization, for instance, around a corner point. We, we ask if we can uh, extend, extend it to the whole manifold, okay? For instance, here, if we have a monomial standardization in some local chart, we, we would like to give rise a global one along all the manifold, and, and for instance. So we answer in the positive way this, this question that we show that it is always possible to, to, uh, uh, to globalize uh, local standardizations. 
And finally, we just focus on the algorithm of the, the combinatorics that monomerize uh, any given generalized function, generalized analytic function, sorry. And what we did is to, to modify somehow the known strategy due to Van der Dries and Spicer. Uh, modifying that, uh, we were able to obtain a, a, a good uh, algorithm, a good global procedure to monitorize any given generalized analytic function. And this is just a remark. We can think about uh, these kind of algorithms of for the certified resolution of singularities as answers to a modified version of Hironaka polyhedra games or a Hironaka game in terms of for I'm sorry, a Hironaka games game, sorry, for the case of generalized uh, power series. Okay. This is, sorry, I sorry, have to stop just... you here. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I finished here. This is the last uh, slide. Yes, I Don't forget to attend the Beatrice talk where she will, she will bring more details. And thank you. That's Thank that's you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. We have like 30 seconds for, for a question. Uh, uh, 